गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट पैकेजिंग ऑफ डी एन ए हेलिक्स और यू कैन से द पैकेजिंग ऑफ डबल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए इन साइड द सेल एज यू नो वेदर इट इज प्रो कैरियोटिक सेल और यू कैरियोटिक सेल the size of the cell is microscopic in nature we can't see the bacterial cell either the eukaryotic cell by our naked eye we can see them with the help of microscope only because their size is very small their size is nearly 5 to 10 micron in size so it's not possible to see the prokaryotic whether the eukaryotic cell by our naked eye but when we talk about the dna if you will see the size of the dna the size of the dna when it is going to be extended or you can say when the dna is going to be relaxed the size of the double helix dna is nearly 2.2 meter in size so the size of the dna age in the extended form it is 2.2 meter in size and the size of the cell is microscopic the size in the micron like 5 to 10 micron as i told you so how a big strand of the dna how a very long size of the dna which is nearly 2 meter in length is going to be accommodated or is going to be accommodated inside the cell this is the question that's why the dna needs to be coiled the coiled dna is again is going to be super coiled and because of the proper packaging of the dna because of the proper super coiling of the dna the size the big size of the dna is going to be compact together is going to be packed together and the size it becomes very small so it can be present inside the cell inside the nucleus without packaging the dna is not going to be accommodate in a very small size of the cell so we will discuss that how the process of the packing or you can say how the dna is going to be packed how the packaging of the dna takes place inside the prokaryotic cell and in eukaryotic cell first of all before the packaging of the dna you calculate the size of a dna helix i have written here the packaging of the dna helix if you want to calculate the size of a dna helix how you will calculate as you know the distance between the two base pairs in the age 0.34 nm nanometer or you can write 0. 34 into 10 to the power 9 meter we have already discussed about the double helix model of the dna in the double helix model of the dna as i have been told you that the size of sorry the distance of the two base pairs 
टू कंसिक्यूटिव बेस पेयर्स एज थ्री पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर नाइनोमीटर और जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर इंटू टू टेन टू दावर नाइन मीटर एंड द टोटल नंबर ऑफ द बेस पेयर्स इन टिपिकल डीएनए इन मेमेलियन सेल इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स इंटू टेन टू दावर नाइन मीटर दिस इज द टोटल साइज ऑफ द बेस पेयर्स द टोटल सॉरी टोटल नंबर ऑफ द बेस पेयर्स प्रेजेंट इन ए डीएनए हेलिक्स सो वॉट विद द लेंथ ऑफ द डीएनए हेलिक्स नाउ यू कैन मल्टीप्लाई the total number of the base pairs to the distance between the two base pairs here 6.6 into the 10 to the power 9 into 0.3 into 10 to the power 9 meter it means now you have multiplied the total number of the base pairs of the dna helix to the 0.34 nanometer which is the distance between the two base pairs and finally you will get the size of the dna helix that is 2.2 meter approximately so this very long dna which is the size uh, the size that is 2.2 meter is now going to be packed there with the packaging so the volume it is going to be decreased the size will minimized and it can be present in a very small cell now how the process of packaging takes place in the prokaryotic cell and you know the prokaryotic cell or you can say the bacterial cell the cell of the cyanobacteria the cell is very primitive in the primitive cell or you can say in the prokaryotic cell the well developed nucleus is absent there is no nuclear membrane there is no nucleoplasm there is no nucleolus it means in prokaryotic cell true nucleus is absent and in the place of the nucleus in the generally in the center of the cell a particular region is there and that is called nucleoid and in this region in the nucleoid the dna is wrapped with some of the non histone proteins and both they are combined together in the form of the nucleoid which is present in the center of the cell i have written here the dna is held together with some proteins these are the basic proteins positive proteins in a region called nucleoid suppose this is the cell of the bacteria and here this is the dna as you know in the case of prokaryotic cell the dna is single and double stranded and this single double stranded dna is circular means they are not linear the double stranded dna is circular and this circular dna is associated with some of the proteins some of the proteins are there but you have to learn these proteins are not histone proteins in the case of eukaryotic cell histone proteins are present but here histone proteins are not there some non histone proteins they are associated with the dna in the region and that is called nuclear and this whole region is called what nucleoid so overall in prokaryotic cell dna is held together 
with some proteins you can write with some non histone proteins in a region and this region this area this region is called nucleoid simply you can say nucleoid is the nucleus of the prokaryotic cell in which the double stranded dna is associated with some of the non histone proteins and the dna in the nucleoid is organized in the large loops so many loops the coiled structure the loops are there and these loops are associated with the non histone proteins so there is a question that how the dna packaging takes place in the bacterial cell in the prokaryotic cell in prokaryotic cell the dna the double helix dna is associated with the some non histone proteins in the region that is called nucleoid so nucleoid is not a true nucleus there is no nuclear membrane no nucleolus there is no nucleoplasm etc now let us talk about the packaging of the dna in eukaryotes that how dna is packed in the case of eukaryotic cell or you can say in plant cell and animal cell as you know in the case of eukaryotic cell that is in plant cell and animal cell the cell is very advanced the true nucleus is found the nucleus is having so many parts nuclear membrane nucleolus nucleoplasm all these parts are there and inside the nucleoplasm the dna is present in eukaryotic cell the packaging of the dna is very complex it starts from a structure that is called nucleosome then again the nucleosome it forms the solenoid structure of the dna or you can say the chromosome then the solenoid structure again it forms the chromatin fibers and these chromatin fibers are further packed into the chromosomes so from the starting you have to observe the diagrams that how the dna is going to be packed in the case of eukaryotic cell actually in the eukaryotic cell the double stranded dna is wrapped around the octamer histone proteins the octamer histone proteins you can see here here some of the histone proteins are there and these proteins are h2a h2b h3 and h4 two molecules of h2a two molecules of h2b two molecules of h3 and two molecules of h4 so how many total molecules are there of the histone proteins total eight molecules eight molecules of histones and the eight histone molecules of the histones they are wrapped like this with the dna molecule and this histone proteins the histone proteins and the dna both are collectively form a unit and that unit is called nucleosome it means a single nucleosome has 
a part that is the core part and that core part contains here these histones octamer these histone proteins and these histone proteins the core is wrapped by the dna molecules the size of the dna molecules nearly 200 base pairs size of the dna is wrapped around the histone proteins histone octamers actually when we observe the diagram of the chromatin the chromatin as you know it is the thread like structure present inside the nucleus or you can say the chromosomes they are appear in the thread like structure these thread like structures are called chromatin when the chromatin you will observe the structure of the chromatin by the electron microscope you can observe the chromatin looks like this it looks the different beads beads on the string means this is the string the thread like structure this is called a string and these is small beads these are called what nucleo nucleosome so how nucleosomes they look inside the nucleus inside the cell the nucleosomes they look just like the beads which are present on the string that's why they are called beads on the string and each bead it act as the nucleosome and if you will make a diagram of a single nucleosome you can observe a single nucleosome is made up of the octamer histone proteins and dna molecules these octamer histone proteins consist of four different histone four types of the histones and these are h2a h2b h3 and h4 and two molecules of each kind of the histone and that's why the core has octamer histones actually one more type of histone protein is found and that is called h1 histone protein and that h1 protein is associated with the linker dna the linker dna is the dna this is the linker dna the linker dna is associated with the it joins the two nucleosomes to each other and this linker dna is associated with which histone protein h1 histone protein so total how many types of the histone proteins are there total five types of histone proteins are present which are associated with the dna and these are h2a h2b h3 h4 and h1 h2a h2b h3 and h4 all these four histone proteins they are the part of the nucleosome while h1 histone protein is associated with the linker dna you can see once again here through the diagram suppose i have told you this is the histone proteins it looks like this this is the dna again it forms the nucleosome again it is the nucleosome
So, as I told you, these are the nucleosome. This is the nucleo, nucleosome. This one is also nucleosome, 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 nucleosome. The nucleosome, it has how H2A, H2B, H3, H4, histone octamers, and the DNA is wrapped around this histone octamers and the site of this DNA which is wrapped on this core of the histones nearly the size is 200 base pairs again the DNA it comes the DNA is not going to be broken down then it again wraps on the histone again it goes again it forms the nucleosome and this is called this DNA which connects these two nucleosomes this is called linker DNA and linker DNA is associated with the this protein H1 histone protein so I hope you understand that the linker DNA lies in between the two nucleosomes and this linker DNA when it goes again it forms it ramp on the nucleosome and the linker DNA is associated with the H1 histone protein. Here, the, as you know, the DNA molecules, they are negatively charged. How the packaging takes place? The DNA molecules, they are negatively charged and histone proteins, they are positively charged. That's why the histone proteins, they are present in the core, in the center and the DNA which is negatively charged it is wrapped around the positively charged histone proteins and one more important point you have to discuss here the histone proteins they are made up of the amino acids which are basic amino acids they are rich in lysine and arginine Sometimes there may be the question that what kind of the basic amino acids they are present into the histone proteins. Each histone protein contains rich amount of they are rich in these two basic amino acids which are lysine and arginine and because of the arginine and lysine amino acids the histones they are positively charged so it's very very important that what are the histone proteins the histone proteins are the positive pro proteins these positive ions comes because of these two different amino acids residue which are they are rich in arginine and lysine and histone proteins they are helpful in the process of packaging of the DNA helix in eukaryotic cell when the histone octamers they are associated with the DNA it forms the unit and that is called nucleosome and all these nucleosomes they just look beads on the string and this is the initial level of packaging of the double helix DNA in the case of eukaryotic cell. Again, the nucleosome which is present on the chromatin fiber. The nucleosomes, again, they are going to be coiled. There is the super coiling. Then it forms a structure that is called solenoid structure. The size of the solenoid structure is 30 nm in size. The solenoid structure is further condensed to form the chromatin fibers. So many chromatin thread like structure it forms. These are called chromatin fibers. And the chromatin fibers, they are further condensed. They are further packed into the chromosomes. So you have started here the packaging from the nucleosome 
in the form of the unit, then the solenoid model, then chromatin fibers, then the chromosomes, and finally the size of the DNA, which I told you nearly 2.2 meter in size, is packed, is condensed, and becomes very small and can be present inside the cell, inside the nucleus, and that's all about the packaging of the DNA. In the later stage of the packaging, some non-histone proteins, they are also, not only the histone proteins, they are helpful in the packaging of the DNA, even some non-histone proteins, they are also associated with the packaging, but not in the initial level, at the higher level. These proteins, they are also helpful to pack the DNA. So the complex form is, met, uh, is the chromosome and the chromosomes you can observe during the process of the cell division at the metaphase stage. Now, one more topic is there that is euchromatine, the types of the chromatin fibers. Actually the chromatin fibers, they are of two types euchromatine and heterochromatine. Both these headings are given in your NCRT book. You have to study euchromatine and heterochromatine. What are euchromatine? The euchromatine is the region of the chromosome or you can say of the chromatin fiber which are lightly stained they are loosely packed, means here in the part of the euchromatin, the packaging is loosed and when it is going to be colored, it takes very light color after the staining. But heterochromatin is the part of the chromatin fiber which is highly packed they look dark also whenever it is going to be color with any agent it is dark stain it retain dark stain and here the chromatin fiber this part is highly packed the second the euchromatin is the transcriptionally active part means it helps in the process of transcription, it can synthesize the RNA which helps in the process of the protein synthesis. Simply you can say the euchromatin part, it helps in the process of protein synthesis. It is transcriptionally, I will teach you later on what is transcription, means it helps in the formation of RNA. It is transcriptionally active part, while heterochromatin which is highly packed, highly condensed this part is not transcribed and thus this part is not helpful in the process of protein synthesis. So this heading also you have to cover differences between euchromatin and heterochromatin. As I told you euchromatin, this is the part of the chromatin fiber which is loosely packed. Heterochromatin is the part of the DNA is the part of the chromatin which is highly packed. Euchromatin after staining it retained light color. Heterochromatin after coloring you can say after staining it takes dark stain, dark color. Euchromatin is transcriptionally active part while heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive part. So that's all for today. Today these two headings I have taught that how packaging takes place in prokaryotic cell as well as in eukaryotic cell and finally you have been taught about euchromatin and heterochromatin. So that's all for today. Thanks. Thanks everyone.